Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter from The Bio Dude. Um, you can visit my website, thebiodude.com. Follow me on YouTube, as well as Instagram, and find The Dude on Facebook. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to utilize my Springtail and Isopod Bioactive uh, Coltrane Kits. Um, so, I do offer uh, Coltrane Kits for each one of my substrates, for my flora, fauna, firma, and Sahara that you can culture the different types of isopods that I hire to consistently repopulate your vivariums if you choose to do so, or to culture another source of food for your reptiles or your amphibians. Um, I'm gonna go over with you guys exactly how to put it together. So what's included in, in your kit is this size tub right here. I like, I, I like these tubs because they give you a pretty solid amount of space to work with. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna make one for terra fauna. Um, and these, uh, this culture that I'm making is going to be for the springtails. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the bag and I'm gonna add in some water into the bag. Okay. And then I'm gonna Work it just a little bit, twist it, let the water go all the way down, so even so it distributes pretty well. I used about two cups of water. And then you take your substrate bag, you dump it in, right like that. Oh, I love how it just keeps that consistency. It's fantastic. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna gonna mix it right like this so it's damp pretty wet but it's not like sopping wet you know notice I'm not using a drainage layer it's not necessary with with how we're doing this so then the next thing that I'm gonna do this since this is for springtails and the springtails that we're culturing in here um, are the large silvers specifically the large silvers do good in any biome um, dry wet which makes them a really really good Springtail to culture for beginners. It's good to culture springtails because they do a really good job cleaning your tank for you, as well as making sure your air pockets are getting created in the substrate and your smaller geckos, lizards, stuff like that loves it. So then I'm gonna take a bag of the biodegradable spag moss that is included and I'm gonna dump in, so I dump in the entire bag. And then you're gonna start mixing it together, right like this. I know this, this looks really bulky, but trust me, springtails love a mix like this. Spread it around. <clears throat> So you see the consistency we got going on right now. Next thing we're going to do, open up the leaf litter. In this case, I'm using oak, magnolia, maple, all that stuff works really, really good. Okay, so the first layer, I'm going to mix. Mix it all together. I just want to let you guys know, I had at one point over 500 springtail cultures using this method. Last year, I shipped literally uh, 9,000 springtail cultures across the United States. Okay, so you see this mix here, and then you're gonna take the rest, the biodegradables, and you're gonna mix it all, all from the top. Okay, now, the bee's knees to the best production is the food. So there's two things as far as food that we're gonna go with. The southern palm bark, which is a super fibrous texture, textured uh, part of the palm tree, that the springtails just absolutely love it. Due to its fibrous, porous nature, takes forever to break down, but the springtails can just eat and eat at it forever. 
Okay. Then you're gonna give it mist, depending on the species. So with large silvers in mind, I'm just gonna give it a light mist. Take your springtails, dump them in there. Then you give them a little bit of the dude's springtail grub once a week. You can sprinkle them, sprinkle it right on top. Especially put it on the palm bark, they go crazy. And then we're gonna put the lid on, go from there. Looks like a lot, but I can tell you, it'll really do the trick for culturing. <clears throat> it's best to keep your springtails at room temperature always. Um, you can keep them in a dark closet. You wanna make sure that you, know, you are keeping it clean uh, you, uh, yourself as well. As in, you know, if, if a lot of moisture is building up in there, that's just creating stagnant air. You want to make sure that there is a little bit of air through to prevent like anaerobic bacterial growth and things of that nature. So next thing I'm going to do is an isopod setup. Now this isopod setup is going to be a little different. I'm, I'm going to be doing this for Florida fast isopods that like it pretty hot and can also tolerate pretty dry. And I'm very excited for this ice pod because it only gets, I believe, a, a less than a third of an inch to, uh, big as an adult, and it does great in the Sahara setups, but they're so small that your beer dragons and things like that aren't going to eat them. Um, so I'm actually going to be doing this in the terra firma. Now for my culturing kits, um, it does, uh, I do offer soil specifics like I mentioned before. So it also gives you a little bit of a first-hand knowledge of how you know it works um, yourself in the soil as in the tank itself. So I dump in about a, a cup of water into the firma and I'm going to dump it right on in. So I, I use the firma because what that's going to do is like the Sahara it's going to dry stay dry on the top but then it's going to uh, you know uh, stay moist in the middle and bottom layers. So it gives your Florida fast isopods a lot of different uh, temperature and humidity things to work with. So I'm going to be doing this a little bit differently. So, you, so, so for the Florida fast isopods, which are my drier ones, if you are keeping a wet species of isopod, like dwarf white or purple, I recommend wetting this moss before you see what I'm about to do. So you're gonna evenly distribute this moss here. Now what I, what's gonna really help with this is gonna help create air pockets, obviously. Um, and it's also gonna be really good because the moss is gonna break down. And the, as it's breaking down, the isopods are gonna start breaking it down too. And they're really gonna like that. And it's also gonna help keep your soil good and healthy during its process of being manipulated by the isopods. So from there, I then am gonna take a little bit more of the spag moss, half a cup of water. So get it out so it's wet but not dripping. And then you're just gonna put it right on top, like that. This is gonna dry out pretty quickly. Uh, okay, so from there, we're gonna take our leaves. So you can see, right in the off. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did spring toast. Just gonna mix it all together. So, another good way to do this that I like to do, put the lid on, shake it up. Look at that, it's all mixed together. On the top, get the uh, palm bark on there. Oh, yeah. We're gonna go crazy for this stuff. So, pieces like this that are in there, ball it up and just dig it down. In about two weeks, all those little chunks are gonna be gone. And there'll be so many isopods around it. 
Okay. As you can see here, with the isopods, I give them the wet form of the bug rub. You make it into feeding stations that are about the size of a dime and you just scatter them throughout the top. You can make them the pieces bigger, but I've noticed they like the smaller pieces better. Spread it around, do that about twice a week for the isopods. Um, depending on the species, if it's a dwarf, a dwarf white, dwarf purple, something that requires the humidity, we're gonna mist this down once a week, okay? If it's something drier, you just wanna you know, make sure, like you would with the firma, that it doesn't completely dry out. Um, and other, other than that, it pretty much takes care of itself. To seed your tanks, you can just pull the palm bark out and then they'll be covering it. So we dump in our isos. There we go, we're good to go. So I wanted to show you guys this. A lot of people ask me about what some of my cultures look like. So this is an old container that I would use. These are for my giant canyon isopods. So I'm gonna move. They disintegrated all their palm bark. It's a bunch of them. I actually have some of these guys for sale. They like it humid and dry. They can deal with a bunch of different types of the varieties. And then for the spring tails, here are some tropical pinks. Check this out. So you can see I'm covering this piece of palm bark on there. Look at that. I could just keep going and going. They're all concentrated down in the middle because all the strings of the palm bark are just falling to the middle because that's where it's been placed. Now, I have a lot of people asking me about culturing their springtails on charcoal. I'm gonna tell you right now, you can do it absolutely. I'm not in any way saying that it doesn't work. However, in my opinion, you're setting yourself up for, up for failure because unfortunately what happens is if you're not doing frequent, frequent water changes in that tub, even though your springtails are floating on top and going all over the charcoal, the charcoal ends up losing its efficacy of taking care of the water. And it ends up getting stagnant, it attracts flies, flying fruit flies, all those nasty winged insects that somehow make their way into your springtail culture. That, and I've noticed with the use of my sub, all four of my substrates, I'm getting really good production with, that, with cultures that do not crash. Um, that was something that I would notice if I was using the charcoal. I would have a really healthy, viable culture, um, and then nine months down the road, it would just be dead. And I have successfully kept hundreds and hundreds of springtail and isopod cultures of all different species. So, you know, it's one of those things that I'm really happy to be able to offer this, uh, this type of good stuff. Um, I do sell these complete kits on my website, guys. Uh, they uh, are under the Springtail and Isopod Culturing Supply. I also do sell all these things individually. Again, my name is Josh Halter, the owner and founder of the Bio Dude. Please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you guys very much.